So the next speaker is Dr. Shobik Dotto, and he will be talking on social reform as a path to political leadership, a dynamic model. Thank you. OK, sure. Uh, thanks to the organizers for uh, uh, providing the opportunity to uh, present this paper. So this is a joint work with Manaswini, who is my colleague at IIM Bangalore, uh, and, uh, and uh, Kalyan Chatterjee, who is at Penn State. So this is a game theory model, which is uh, uh, uses uh, the technique of perfect Bayesian equilibrium. And it studies a problem which is uh, primarily to do with, uh, in the broadly in the realm of uh, political science and political economy. So I'll just first lay out uh, what the problem is, and then I'll go through the model and the results. OK, so what it does is to formulate and uh, and tries to analyze a model of political leadership, uh, specifically uh, leadership of a political movement. So what do I mean is we kind of seek to model like what would be the process that a political leader uh, would try to take uh, when there are some kind of a uh, some kind of a reputation concern and uh, so it's basically saying that whether if I just want to kind of uh, say the it goes back to the early independent days when suppose Gandhiji wants to attack the Britishers it's basically saying that is it a better strategy to just say that okay we want to attack you or behave in some manner and then in some way say that we want to attack you. Because the problem is that the current regime might actually f attack you once you say that I want, I, I want to oppose you. Okay, so, so, so a leader can, uh, so here there are three players, there are citizens, there is a current regime and then there is a leader. And in environments where such, as I said, political action can be met with strong reaction from the current regime, uh, it may not be a good idea for always a leader to, or a, a want to be leader would be un unwise to attempt such action without uh, having already established a strong reputation. So I'll come to some examples. So, even if we go back to Gandhi's example, Gandhi began with very small scale movements uh, in the Champaran against uh, Britishers, indigo planters, then in Ahmedabad, uh, Indian meal owners. So these were not direct attacks against the Britishers that way, but this helped to uh, establish his reputation as a leader. Okay. Uh, so, but these of none of these movements has any had any direct threat to the British rule in India at that point of time. Then uh, others like uh, Wallace in Poland uh, came into prominence as uh, by organizing uh, strikes. Hoover, who later became the president in the U.S., was successfully ran U.S. Food Administration, European Relief Reports. Uh, this is, to some extent, I don't know whether it's true or false, but uh, we know Kejriwal started with all this anti-corruption movement, but no one at this point at least uh, had an idea that he might be running for the post of the chief minister uh, in Delhi. So, so, so these are all different situations which come from different, uh, uh, not directly political movements or directly against threat against the current regime. So it was not at least perceived at that point of time. So therefore, uh, as we see in all these cases, the first step that the leaders might take is to build a reputation to undertake some kind of a non-political activity which doesn't have a threat against the current regime. So it kind of looks like very uncorrelated. So, so it was for these leaders like some perception of selflessness in exposing to our, uh, oneself to some risk, like, but there is no immediate uh, prospect of reward for them uh, for the task that they take undertake at that point of time. So I'll not talk about the literature review. Uh, if there is time, I'll come back because I just wanted to discuss the model first. Uh, so as I said, there are three types of agents, the government G, uh, the leader L, and the unit mass of citizens, which is represented by M. The leader, uh, 
is endowed with an efficiency parameter theta, which can be either high or low. So it's, called, it's the ability of the leader, who might be a high ability leader or a low ability leader. And that's privately known uh, to, uh, so what we'll initially do is that the leader is inexperienced, that is, does not know his own efficiency. But we re later relax this assumption, that is, the leader at least knows his own efficiency. We start off with the case that no one has, the, even the leader does not know his own ability. But we will, sh uh, but we'll somehow show the result, sorry. But uh, we'll show that the results are robust to that assumption. But uh, so to start off with, the leader's ability is not known, and the leader also doesn't know. Uh, so you can think of ability as something like, so given the same amount of resources that are available, a high ability leader would be able to execute uh, uh, or in somehow in a better fashion than a low ability leader. So where does this theta come? I'll, uh, in a, it will be clear in a couple of slides. Uh, obviously, that's, there is a common prior that the leader is of high ability. That's alpha 1. And, of, and as the assumption says, since uh, these are uh, theta h is greater than theta l. Now, leader has another dimension. So one is dimension is the ability. The other dimension is about the leader's motive or objective. OK? So a leader might be a, have a non-political objective. So the leader doesn't want to overthrow the present regime. So it's basically saying that, say, I just want to participate in a non, like an anti-corruption movement just for the sake of participating. I don't have any other uh, stake. Like, I want to become popular there, and then I want to run for office. Not, not, nothing like that. So I, my motive is very clear from the beginning. And a leader with a political objective wants to overthrow. So from, from the very beginning, I have uh, another motive that I want to overthrow the present regime. And so this also, so therefore, this is the, the, as I said, there are two dimensions. One is about the ability, and, about, and the second is this objective of the leader. And beta 1 is the prior probability that the leader has a non-political objective. In the initial one, the, I said that the leader itself doesn't know about his own or her own ability. But from the beginning, we assume that the leader knows at least his or her own objective. Uh, in the late, latter part of the paper, we assume that the leader knows both the ability and the, uh, and the objective. But the results remain unchanged. So, okay. So this is the type of the leader, as, as I said, in two dimensions. Uh, we assume that, uh, that the leader with non-political objective is only of high type. We can make, uh, this is just for simplicity, uh, but we can assume that uh, nothing would change if we assume that the non-political uh, uh, leader is also of both types. So there is nothing sacrosanct about this assumption. And then the last is that leader obviously can choose from any of the two movements, that is revolution or social movement. So what is R and SM? Uh, so basically, R is directly attacking the present regime. And the pay, as I mentioned, the payoffs later on, it will become clearer. And SM is a social movement. OK. So this is uh, just a two-period game. So at the beginning, the leader of a type tau chooses the nature of the movement, that is R or SM. If, the, if it chooses a revolution R, and if it is successful, uh, I'll again provide what success is in the next couple of slides. Uh, but at this point, I'm just pro pro uh, providing you the sequence of events. So only a successful revolution would overthrow a government. Now, upon hearing the leader's uh, announcement here, the government and the citizens can be update their beliefs about the leader's objective. Then the government can announce a level of force which, with which it wants to combat this leader's announced movement. OK, so the government whether wants to attack or don't want, doesn't want to attack. Basically, that's the, so we have a binary action uh, for the government, yeah. Is it allowed, but it will never choose, because the payoffs will be designed in a such a way that it will never choose R. But yeah, in the model would allow for that. But in equilibrium, it will never choose uh, R. But the what we'll show is that 
uh, maybe just hold on for, but yeah. Yeah, it will, we allow for that, but in, uh, the payoffs are such that we, in equilibrium it doesn't happen. Okay, so as I said, that the, uh, the government can either put no effort or can put an effort W. So W is kind of, you can think of as the rent that the government enjoys by being in power every period, so it can kind of employs all the payoff that it can get. Uh, so after observing the uh, action chosen by the leader and the government force, citizens decide whether to participate in the movement or not. So P or NP are the two action choices that the citizens have. And say, suppose that MT be the proportion which is endogenously determined. Uh, I'll show you in a couple of slides uh, what MT is. But MT is basically the proportion of citizens uh, that is endogenously decided, that decides to participate in movement at any point of time. And then nature determines the outcome of the movement, whether it's successful or, or failure, but success, the probability is endogenously determined. So we'll come here. So here is the probability of a movement. The so probability that the movement is successful is basically is given by theta into mt. So it says that greater is the citizen participation, the higher is the probability of a success of a movement. And also it says that given the same level of citizen participation, a higher ability leader has greater chances of being successful. So that's what this probability uh, would mean. Now, upon the revelation of the success or failure of the movement, then the quality of the political leader is updated to alpha t hat. So this is the reason that we actually kind of sidelined the non-political leader, because then we have to update for that as well. So we want to just focus primarily on the political leader's process. So, so otherwise, there is no reason to assume that the non-political leader is only of high type. OK, so that's the only reason. So that's to kind of have a clear effect. So upon revelation, the common prior will be this. And this is updated by Bayes' rule. And that's why we have the notion of a Bayesian equilibrium. So if a leader announces a revolution in period one, we assume that the citizens decide to participate in the movement. Outcome of the movement is revealed, and the game ends. So basically, we assume that whenever there is a revolution, that the game ends. So basically, that's all. OK, so that's also less just for um, more. Uh, simplicity, so it's, so we can make uh, we can relax that as well. So this is just a history, and the, the definitions will just uh, pass off that. Um, so just now about the citizen, so about the payoffs and how the citizen be behaves. So each citizen bears a private cost of participating in a movement. Okay, and uh, this is the private cost of participation that they draw from a uniform distribution. In addition, they can they also bear the cost that the government imposes. So if the government doesn't impose anything, then so this is uniform. Basically, the government says, okay, whoever is participating, I'm going to send them off in the jail. Okay, so that's kind of uniform across all participants. Or if the government doesn't react, then only you have your own private cost of participation. So therefore, the total cost of participating in a movement for a citizen I is this. Participants are myopic, so they behave every period. Uh, so they don't discount future or all these things that don't happen. This is just for uh, the unique equilibrium, that unique mass participation. That's all. OK, so therefore, the citizen's part is, uh, utility function, or the payoff, is such that if there is a successful revolution, then it gets W. If there is a successful social movement, then it still gets W. And in all other cases, it gets 0. Now, you can tell why it is W for both. Again, that's not necessary. Just to reduce the number of parameters in the model, we can make it different as well. So successful revolution or successful social movement can give different payoffs. So that's not necessary uh, either for the results. OK, so therefore, uh, for any successful movement gives them a positive payoff. Any unsuccessful movement doesn't give in them any payoff. That's all. OK, down the leader's payoff, a leader who is non-political derives a payoff of W only from a successful social movement. That's all. So since I care only about kind of a society and I don't have any other objective, so I only get a positive payoff only when there is a successful social movement. That's the rational behind this assumption. So therefore, that's the, as I said, uh, 
And then this is the political leader's uh, uh, payoff. Now, the political leader's payoff says that I only get a positive payoff only when there is a successful uh, revolution. Other than that, even if there is a successful social movement, I don't get any positive payoff. So therefore, now you see that though it doesn't get any successful payoff from a social movement, then why is it after a social movement? The only reason behind it, if it has a successful social movement at the, period, at the end of period one, there is updating. And as a result of which, your, your, the belief about the leader being of high ability increases. As a result of which, there is more mass participation in the beginning of period two as a result of which the probability of success of the movement in period two increases. So that's kind of a motive that my, I might have. But at the same time, there is a problem which, uh, there is a trade-off. Therefore, that's not very clear that what would the leader do. And the trade-off would be very clear as we go along. OK, so therefore, this just the, to finish up with the payoff, I have nine, uh, 10 minutes. So government enjoys a per period rent of W for remaining in office. As I said, that it enjoys a period per uh, W per period when it is in office. So, uh, it loses, uh, if it loses power, then it gets zero. And as we said, that uh, the government incurs now a cost C of GT. So it's like a marginal cost of uh, implementing force. So that's the cost of implementing force. And GT takes any two of these values. That's like we actually started off with, we thought that. Uh, GT to be a continuous variable, but uh, it turns out that uh, it's more difficult to work with continuous variable than a discrete case. But uh, there is no other, no other reason for assuming it, as I said, to be zero or W. Okay. So therefore, uh, that's the government's uh, payoff, as, uh, as I said, that if it remains in office, uh, so therefore, there is a success. So there's a social movement. It doesn't matter whether it's a success or a failure because it doesn't threat the existence of the government. So therefore, it gets W. But if it has exerts force, then it gets W minus CGT. If there is a revolution, but the revolution fails, then it gets W minus CGT. Basically, if it incurs cost, but if GT is zero, then it gets W. And if there is a successful revolution, then basically it loses power. In that case, it gets a zero. But in case it incurs cost, then it gets negative payoff of minus CGT. And the leader and the government discount the future with the same uh, discount factor uh, uh, delta. OK, so that's the uh, assumptions we make. OK, so these are the Bayesian updatings that are hap happening uh, uh, about when there is a uh, announcement of a movement and uh, I'll just skip and this is the updations about when there is a at the end of period one so upon success or failure of the movement at the end of uh, period one okay so I'll, I'll just skip all this uh, nitty-gritties so now a citizen pa will participate only when it sees that the probability of success uh, into W, so that's the expected probability minus the cost of participation is greater than or equal to zero. And from there, uh, we can calculate this endogenous mass participation. Uh, you will see that if the government actually puts more, if puts force, then the for given level of alpha and beta, uh, citizen participation is lower, which we'd expect that if the government incurs force, basically citizen participation decreases. And as you remember, basically how it works is that the government in, uh, provides uh, force, citizen participation decreases, which decreases the probability of success. If you remember, I said probability of success is theta into m. So therefore, the probability of a successful movement goes down. OK, so that's the reason that, uh, and also uh, uh, MT behaves if uh, the chances that the leader is of more higher ability, that probability or the belief goes up, then mass participation would go up. And that's the reason uh, that you want your alpha to be raised. Uh, now, this is the second period result. Now, the second period result basically says, if you don't want to read this, that it says that the government, if the belief about the leader, about the political leader being of high ability crosses this threshold alpha bar, then the government incurs force upon seeing a revolution. 
if it sees a social movement in the second period, then it doesn't imply that then it doesn't incur any cost because it's the end of the game. It knows that this is obviously it has to be a social uh, or a, a, poli a, a non-political leader, so therefore it doesn't incur any cost. If it, if it observes a revolution, uh, then only when the pro the uh, the belief about its ability is above alpha bar, then only it incurs a, a cost. Yeah. No, but is it, so this is, you are saying, another higher order thing. Yeah, so we are actually in the paper, we don't do this, but there is actually a work on which says that some movements and repression from the movement can actually lead to more citizen participation. You're correct. Uh, that, that we don't model here, but there is already a, a, a I don't rem recall the exact name of the paper. I can look up and tell you. Yeah, there is something like that. There's already a model uh, which actually tells you, basically, if it sees that there is repression on these kinds of movements and there is more citizen participation. But that's not how we model. We only say that citizens only look up to the leader and if it believes that, yes, the leader is of higher quality or ability, then I will participate because this leader most likely is going to bring in success for us. That's all, okay? But now, as I said, that, so therefore, initially what I said that now the problem is with this is that Obviously, I want to increase my higher uh, ability, my belief about my ability, because that would increase citizen participation. But at the same time, if it crosses alpha bar, it attracts attention from the government. And then the government represses this movement, which can also lead to lower citizen participation. So as you see that there is a trade-off. In one way, increasing my belief or increasing the belief about my ability helps me to attract citizen participation. But at the same time, if I become like literally, really, really popular, then what happens is that it attracts um, attention from the government. And then that can, and the very fact that the government might actually overthrow this region or attack my uh, 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 whatever movement, um, then that can actually lower citizen participation. Then what should I do? So that's the result that I'm going to talk about immediately. Okay, so I'm just going to skip if there are any questions. I can come back to the slides. This is actually interesting in some sense. Basically, it's saying that, um, uh, it's saying that actually uh, if a leader actually faces threat in the first period in the social movement, a political leader faces a threat in the social movement, and then if it's is unsuccessful, then it somehow is better than actually not facing and being successful, unsuccessful. So basically, if I might be confusing, maybe I'll just skip this and come back uh, later on. Okay, I just don't want to confuse uh, you. Okay, so here is the government strategy in the first period. So in the second period, the government strategy is very clear. But in the first period, the government strategy is the, if it sees a revolution in the first period, then it would act accordingly as in, in the second period. So there is nothing that changes. So therefore, if the belief about, it, about the ability of the political leader is above alpha bar, it will put in force. Otherwise, it will not. So that's uh, very clear. But now if it sees a social movement, now I'm not clear whether that comes from the political leader or a non-political leader. Now, if it comes from a political leader, maybe it is better that I thrash him now and and therefore he doesn't become popular and then I don't have to face threat in the second period. So it's better for me rather to thrash this at this point now. So therefore you it, it you often see happening things happening that that movements which seemingly like look like very unpolitical or non-political also being thrashed by governments, okay? And this can explain, this kind of a model can explain to an extent about those kinds of things. Okay, so here what the government does is that for very low beliefs about the ability, it doesn't put any effort, uh, it doesn't put any force. For high ability, also it doesn't put any effort, but for intermediate ranges, it puts effort, okay? So basically saying that if your belief is, if you are, thought to be a very low quality leader, then I don't do anything because I know that you will anyways not be able to do anything much, so therefore I don't care too much about that. There's a region which is close to one, that the, you are of high ability leader, there also by putting effort, I'm not being able to achieve much because even if I put in effort, I'll because you are so good, then I'll not be able to actually counter you so much. So therefore, I don't do anything. In between, uh, I do uh, uh, for intermediate stages. 
And how does the leader behave? Now, what does the leader say is, sorry, where did I go? Yeah. Oops. Uh, just give me two minutes. So here, this is obviously uh, what the government strategy is. And this is what the leader would do. Uh, in the leader also, for very small values of al alpha and for very large values of alpha, the leader will actually not wait and will actually do revolution in the first period itself. It is only for intermediate ranges of beliefs that the leader will actually do that social movement in the first period and then uh, fall, do this revolution in the second period. So basically leaders in this intermediate range will follow this path of gradualism and then do a revolution uh, in the second period. What is actually interesting is something more than that. So this is what I'll just uh, say and finish it off. Uh, so this is one result is obviously that this is, uh, as I said, that for intermediate ranges, the leader uh, takes this path of gradualism. But what is more interesting also is as the belief, prior belief about the leader being non-political increases, we find actually the government actually uh, puts more force when it sees a social movement in the first period. So basically, it's saying that the, you believe that the leader is of non-political type more, but why are you still putting more effort? Why are you still attacking the social movement in the first period? The reason being that there is a small probability still that the leader is actually of a political nature. And then the leader has more reasons to masquerade as a non-political type in the first period and therefore the government doesn't want to take a chance and therefore it wants to attack more of a social movement in the first period. Okay, so that's the more of an interesting result and that's where I'll kind of uh, uh, stop because I'm already out of time. Okay, thank you.